You know, there's a lot of negativity out there in the world. And well, here at Netlink Daily, we want to keep the vibes real positive by reminding you about all the cool, awesome tech stuff that happens every day. So come chill with us. We accept you. For you. Some hackers apparently did not have chill vibes, though, as a sizable chunk of the internet had a nasty surprise this morning. A number of large sites, including Spotify, Reddit, and the New York Times, were taken offline by a DDoS, or Distributed Denial of Service, attack. We still don't know where the attack originated, but its primary target was DIN, an internet infrastructure company in New Hampshire responsible for offering DNS services that route users to the correct website when they put a URL into a browser. The attack primarily affected users on the eastern seaboard of the United States and a bit of Europe, or maybe I should say is affecting them, because as of writing this episode, the attack was still ongoing after having subsided for a bit. Some security experts, like the great Brian Krebs, are saying the attack may have used a recently published tool called Mirai that can use enslaved Internet of Things devices for large-scale DDoS attacks. This story is still developing, so stay on your toes. It truly is a sad day when you're prevented from even posting a selfie to Twitter. Whoever did this is a monster. Numerous news outlets have been reporting on recent interviews with the PlayStation 4 Pro's lead system architect, Mark Cerny, wherein he shed light on what's inside the new console. One of the most interesting things to be revealed is the fact that the PS4 Pro has two GPUs, essentially running Crossfire in a console. The GPUs are the same model as the one in the original PS4, so when the PS4 Pro runs an original PS4 game, it simply uses just the one GPU. When a game has been optimized for the PS4 Pro's extra power, it runs both GPUs. The Pro also has an extra gig of system memory to better multitask. Wait, so if a console has a dual GPU setup, maybe now developers will have an excuse to optimize for it on PC as well? <laughs> That's a funny joke. And Toby, the company, not the guy from The Office, has launched its second generation eye tracking product, the iTracker 4C. Very straightforward naming scheme there, I like it. The 4C adds head tracking as well as eye tracking, and it's apparently the only device on the market with both capabilities. It also has a chip to assist with processing, so there's less strain on the host device. That also allows the 4C to connect using a single USB 2 cord. Around 40 games currently support eye tracking, including Deus Ex Mankind Divided, The Division, and the upcoming Watch Dogs 2, but the 4C can also be used for Windows Hello facial recognition. We actually reviewed an MSI laptop with built-in Toby eye tracking and found it was kind of interesting, but definitely sort of a niche thing. You can click here for the review. It's time for... Time for quick bits. I think that's just about right, Dylan. Thanks for your submission. The rest of you, tweet me with a clip of yourself saying quick bits to get featured. There's nothing in this. Some Battlefield 1 players on PS4 are getting a nasty surprise in the form of a glitch in the game's dynamic resolution scaling that renders the game at a resolution of 160 by 90. Huh. <sighs> I'll say it. At this point, you might as well be playing on an actual potato. Good news for owners of desktop GTX 1070 graphics cards. Various manufacturers are releasing BIOS updates that should fix memory issues some users have been experiencing. Acer has released a doozy of a gaming monitor. It's a 24-inch, 1440p, 100% sRGB display with NVIDIA G-Sync and 144Hz refresh rate, but it can apparently be overclocked to 165Hz for when 144 isn't good enough for you. You're fancy. <laughs> Samsung is looking to move right on past the whole Galaxy Note 7 debacle, as according to posts by Samsung India, they'll soon be releasing a new phone called the Galaxy On Nixt NXT. Probably should have held on a bit and come up with a better name, but oh well. And Google's Daydream VR Viewer is now up for pre-order in the US, UK, and Germany for 80 bucks US. Why don't you love us, Google? What did, what did Canada do to you? Ah, well, ah, come on, he means well. Sources for all of today's news stories can be found in the NCX forum post linked in the description. Yuck, a mangat. See, this is supposed to mean let's go, but in my head it sounded like something you would say when you're when you're annoyed, like, ah, yuck, a mangat already. Hey, so you guys might have noticed we're approaching one million subscribers, and if you didn't, 
that's fine too. I hardly noticed. Well, all I've got to say is that isn't true. We have noticed and we're planning something special for you guys because that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. We didn't have anything else to really call out today, so I just thought I'd plant that idea in your heads. One million is coming. So prepare your butts. All right, that's it for Nettling Daily. Thank you so much for watching. Click over here for previous videos. Check us out on Twitter over here. But as always, like the video if you liked it, that is. Comment below for fans with benefits. And subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX, if that tickles your fancy. Now, I've got to go spread more positive vibes out into the universe. Some people have, as they say, no chill. Me, I've got lots of chill. I've got chill in spades, I'm wearing a backwards hat. So chill. Too, too much chill, if you ask me. So, see you later.